Peace, love, harmony, and light. This is Chief Kalanago with another educational video, uplifting video. And I must say that even before I begin that this is all public information. So I do reserve all my creator given rights. And man, we are living in troubled times. We are living in a dangerous time. But I must say that we are also living in a beautiful time. We are living in a perfect time. All right. Opportunity. And as a people. We have a tremendous amount of work to do. Since I have started this journey of telling all people that we are the original people that they call the Indians, we are the people they call the Indians when they came to this land, that we are the aboriginals of this land. I have seen so many other people, you know, um, telling our truth and uh, it's a beautiful thing. I love that. However, people such as myself, I have always been ahead of my time you know and what I mean by that is when I first started doing this there weren't too many people talking about that actually people thought I was crazy so I'm still inclined to teaching sharing information doing what I do I love it but I believe that there are a, a, a few people you know um, such as myself that always have to take things to another level we could never be stagnant all right the moment we ever stand still or become stagnant you know i believe that um that could be detrimental so yes i still love sharing information however we still have to make moves you know um we still have to make tangible moves things that we could feel and see all right you know and some progress and what I'm going to share in this video with you is some things that I'm going to make you visualize and I'm going to make you see those things from a different perspective because a lot of times because things are done in the open that we may not see the subliminal messages. We may not see exactly what's going on because a lot of times the lies become normal. The lies sometimes could be perpetuated as the truth because of the way it's promoted. But there's no such thing as half truth. You feel me? Anytime that any information is not the complete truth, then the entire narrative is null and void. It is null and void. So our story, our history is incorrect. It's an illusion. And part of all of what we are doing, the studying, the teaching, the awakening is all part of the journey. But what are some of the steps that we have to take as to how and what we need to do to restore our birthright? First things first, like I always say, you have to know who you truly are. You know, it's more people hit me up all, every day. Hey, chief, I need an ID card. I tell people, first things first. To me, this is not about just an ID card and making money. Yes, we all want, you know, that fiat currency because we have bills to pay. We have a livelihood to maintain. You know, we got um, things to do. But to me, it's more than just that. The true value for me is having a true understanding within your heart your mind and soul what it means to be an aboriginal of this land you see once you are that's a conviction in your heart which is dealing with things from a spiritual aspect all right then it could manifest in the flesh because now you can you will not falter you feel me you will not sell your people out once it's in your heart. 
and your mind and your soul, your spirit. And that's what we need to feel. I know I feel it when I speak about being an Aborigine. Okay? The pride, the joy. I feel my ancestors rejoicing because of my emotions, the way that I feel, the expression, okay, that literally, I mean, <laughs> shines through me. It's a feeling. And when I express myself, I express it in the streets with my attire, my feathers, my, you know, my poncho, my crown. You know, my raccoon tails, my, 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 my fox. That's the pride and that's the joy that I have. And I could see the respect that I get in the streets. I mean, it, it, it's unfortunate that the people who look like me, they are the ones who kind of, kind of look at me like I'm crazy. But for some reason, other ethnic groups, they seem to acknowledge and respect the fact that I know who I am. But this is not pretty much, this is not what this video is about, you know, this evening. This video is about breaking down, okay, and explaining to you who an alien is, an immigrant. And for those of us who have been coined or classified as black and African American, and some of you are so disrespectful in calling yourself niggas, you would see, and in this video, you will find out that you soon will be called an alien because you are already an alien. And I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. You are an immigrant. And I'm going to, because you think that it's people from the so-called Caribbean or it's Mexicans that they call immigrants or, or aliens. No, those are called illegal immigrants and illegal aliens. However, the so-called black man and so-called African-American or colored, or some of you, again, those of you who disrespect your ancestors by calling yourself niggas, you are, we are what they call legal aliens and legal immigrants, okay? Now, I can assure you that we are neither. And I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. We have had a long history. You see, they only tell you about the, 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 the recent history of the Americas. They never tell you about prehistoric America. America is part of the old world. And I'm talking about very ancient old world. And we have always been the beacon of light, of hope to the world. We have always brought the world civilization. I'm talking about from the Mississippi, which is actually connected to the Nile, which is the continuation of the Nile. And we have taken civilization from our lands down into the African continent. And we taught the world civilization, Europe. For those of you who don't know, Europe is part of Africa. Like I've told you, I've told you guys that in videos before. But it has always been to make our world the new world. And that's what this is all about. The taking over of a people, an empire, their land. And from day one, these people have, they have set foot on our lands. That has been the goal. Okay. But like I told y'all before, they couldn't lay claim to the land even after so-called Christopher Columbus and all their other, you know, um, what you call pilgrims or, 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 or conquistadors or missionaries, um, you know, whatever they, 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 they call themselves. They could not lay claim to the land and say it was theirs because there were people already living here. So they, like I told y'all before, they created the doctrine of discovery. And in from that concept or that perspective, they say that whatever they discover 
is theirs, even if they had people living there, because our people were a nomadic people. We traveled our continent from different times and different seasons, and we moved. So their, how would I put it? Their argument was that seeing that you guys don't stay in one place, then you cannot say it's yours. So the doctrine of discovery, you know, opened up an avenue for them to lay claim to our lands. Now, who are the, the true aliens? Who are the true immigrants? It cannot be us. It cannot be us because we are the original people of the land. And they know this. They know this. The question is, do you know that? And for those of you who are subscribed to my channel and other channels, you know, you know, like, you know, um, the other guys and, you know, and gals or brothers and sisters who teach the same information, you know, by now that we are the original people of the land. But everything is about a game. It's game. It's a game that they are playing, a game of chess. These people are always 20, 50 years ahead in their preparation. They knew at some point that we would come into the knowledge of who we truly are. So they had to put all these obstacles in our way. The changing of our identity. Okay. The, the narrative or the theory of us being Africans. Then you know, black, African, you know, black, African-American, Negro, colored, nigger, you know, Afro-American. Then they just shoved this movement of us being Moorish Americans in our faces. And it was a strong movement. It is still a strong movement because there are actual aboriginals who think that they are Moors and we, as we know, Moors are from Africa. But they're still going to argue that. And I've debunked that over and over again and proved to you that Moors are from Africa. So for those of you who want to continue calling yourself Moorish American, then that's your loss. Okay? I'm not here to convince you that you are or you are not anymore. I have given you the facts. And like I said, it's facts over feelings, documentation, bits, conversation. And I've shown you every time because what Moors do is every time they get information they inject the word more in the narrative and tell you, oh, that was a more. No, it wasn't. Okay, that was edited to put that word more in there. Nowhere in any treaties, okay, with the original people of this land, a treaty was made with a more. It was made with the Indians, not Moors. Okay? So, moving on. It's always been a game to take us away from who we truly are. Because once they could do that, then they have access to our land, which is our birthright. All right? Here's another trap. Another trap is calling you a United States citizen. Now, we all know that the United States is a corporation. I've done videos to show you that. Another way to solidify that you are a part of that corporation is through the institution of the birth certificate, right? But what they didn't tell you was it wasn't to record a birth of a child. It was to record an event. So they only recorded your event, the event of your birth, but not your actual birth. Your birth certificate is actually a death certificate because a living baby boy or girl was born and they had to create a new citizen, a new entity. However, since the United States is a corporation, all right, and it only exists within a 10 mile radius of Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. All right. That is where the corporation is. It is not part of the soil. It is on the soil, but it's not part of the soil. So what they had to do to take the citizens, the people, the natural people of the land was when you are born, they take your, your, the, the, your footprint and they take that and they print it on your birth certificate. As you know, your foot 
or your feet is supposed to be on the soil of the land. You're supposed to walk on the land with your feet. But since they could take that event of your birth and place you on paper, then you only exist in that paper world. All right. And then a fictitious entity was created with the name that you think it's you. But the name that our mother gave us, it's not us. All right. We represent that entity, but it's not us. It is fictitious. It, it is fake. That's why, again, it, it's in all capital letters. And another word for tombstone is capstone. So you are not real when you say that that's you. That person on that driver's license, that person on that birth certificate is not you. It's a fictitious entity. It is not a living entity. It has no blood. It has no life. And that's why they get to abuse it because to them, it's all business at the end of the day. So they could come pick up your children and don't feel any remorse because they, there is no feelings in business. Don't take it personal. That's what they say. It's all business. But we cannot be citizens because of the Indian Citizen Act when they made all. Because remember, I, I, look, again, I have done this in videos. Go back through the videos. We as the original people of that land, we were tax free. That's number one. Okay, we didn't pay taxes. The federal government didn't deal with us they had no jurisdiction over us because they had to deal with us from a government to government basis in other words we know that you now on our land you, you have forced yourself on our land and let us try to live in peace so we gonna, we are going to do us and you're going to do you let us just respect each other okay that was the deal and it's still the deal today if we step up to the occasion that was the deal and still is but they made all the indians because of civil rights why do you want to be a civilian i don't know okay that's where a lot of our ancestors some of the lapses that they made wanting to be like them wanting to be part of their system wanting to be civilians looking for equal rights when the truth is you had the original rights of the land because we are the original people all right we had banks and i've showed you the proof we had owned all the banks we had owned all the businesses we had our own governments okay and I'm talking about this is in recent times, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s. So it is not far-fetched, okay? We don't have to go back talking about centuries and centuries ago to prove that we are the people of this land. But when they passed the Indian Citizen Act of 1924, they made all our ancestors citizens of this fictitious corporation called the United States. But there is a provision in there that says all the Indians were made citizens provided that it didn't impair our life as being Indians. In other words, our culture, our land, our mannerisms, our way of life. And I've asked you before, do we have our land? No. Do we have our culture? No. Do we have our languages? No, that was taken from us. So by default, we are not United States citizens. But they have you believing that you are. It is a trick. You are not. So now you have to be placed in a category. And if you are not a United States citizen and you don't know that you're an Aboriginal, what they call an American Indian, then that means you are an alien. Not just an alien, but you are a legal alien. You are an immigrant in your own home. Okay? So don't get caught up with the distractions. Whether you think you were born here or not, you are still in the same predicament as other Aborigines who came from South and so-called Central America. Because we are all Aborigines. Okay? We are in the same boat. So don't be 
food. And the goal is to get rid of all the immigrants, all the aliens, whether they are legal or illegal, you are still an alien because by right, your citizenship, by default, you don't have it because you are the Indian. By default, you are not a citizen. So they know that you are an illegal alien. So they are putting things in place, okay? They are putting things in place to get rid of us. So you have to be very mindful what you identify as. You have to be very mindful what you identify as. The moment that you start saying that you are black and African American, they will take you, all right? They will take you. If you think that you are African, they will take you to Africa and they'll just put you somewhere in Africa. They will make a deal with African governments to just place you somewhere in Africa in some concentration camp. No, I'm not saying that to scare you. No, that's not what this is about. I am telling you the reality of what's going on. It's the purge of the American Aborigines. Okay? This thing is complicated, but once you truly understand the history of who we are, and you know the governments, okay, what happened, what transpired, and you know what's law and what's not law, then it's really easy to disseminate. It's really, really easy. It's not complicated. It's a matter of us stepping up. We have to be proactive. We have to take action now. You feel me? We have to. So once again, our backs is starting to be against the wall. We have the 2020 census, the Real ID Act, the deadline for all states to adapt it is in 2020. What are they trying to do? Hmm? What are they trying to do? It doesn't matter what you do, you will never be a citizen of the United States because of the Indian Citizen Act, because we are the ones they call the Indians. And by default, we could never be citizens. So what does that mean? If you don't get into your proper identification, as an American Aboriginal, okay, aka American Indian, then you are an immigrant. You are an alien. Regardless of what you think, believe me, that's what they're classifying you as. So once again, my brothers and sisters, get your shit together. Okay, get your affairs in order. We have to step up. They cannot force us as the indigenous people of this land to get their real IDs. Okay? No, they cannot. Because there's no such thing as a real ID. That's forcing us to assimilate. And that's against international law. All right? But we, as a people, we have to step up, take action. We have to be proactive. So I'm telling you again, well, I'm not, I can't tell you. Well, I'm telling you, and you do what you want with the information, get your affairs in order. Okay? Get your affairs in order. Because they will scoop you up. Believe me. It's a very, very simple question. What's your nationality? You say black? You say African American? And for those of you who are extremely ignorant, you might say nigger. They will pick you up. They have no regards for you because you don't exist. The goal is to get rid of you. The goal is to purge you out. Okay? There's one thing the United States don't want the world to see. Is them shooting indigenous people in the streets. And the only way, before they even approach you, to know that you're an aborigine or indigenous, is to have your attire on, to have your feathers on. Can you imagine? The world, it's being broadcast on CNN or, or, or Fox or whatever, YouTube, that the United States is killing Indians, is killing indigenous people. That will be the end of them. So they had to demonize so-called black people and African-Americans, okay? Make them look like animals. So when you're shot down in the street, the world is already immune 
to your demise because they have deemed you a savage. You feel me? So I'm asking you to redeem yourself. Okay? Redeem yourself. Step into your proper identity as an American Aboriginal, a.k.a. American Indian. Because they have to deal with us, all right, from a government to government basis. They have to. So the true immigrants and aliens are the Caucasians, the Africans, the, you know, anybody who's not an American Aboriginal, they are the true immigrants. So right now, our world, our country, our land is being governed by aliens. That's right. It is the takeover of the aliens. They have taken over our world. And when I say our world, I'm talking about the American Aborigines, our land, the American continent. So the head of their organization is an alien. It is the number one, the, the number one alien in the world is the head of the organization, which is the president of the United States. But he has the nerve calling Aborigines, you know, immigrants. That is because Aborigines don't know who they are because they, they, they refuse to step up as the original people of the land. So my brothers and sisters, I'm asking you to step up, get your affairs in order, okay? Get your affairs in order. It is your duty to let them know who you are. That's your duty. Once again, this is Chief Kalanago with some information that's needed, okay? I'm always here to provide my services. Like I said, that's what I do. Get your affairs in order. This is not a game. Okay? We have to step up as the Aborigines. We got work to do. Don't let them continue to have you in the system as an alien or an immigrant, whether you think you was born here or not. It doesn't make a difference. Because of the Indian Citizen Act, we are the people they call the Indian we cannot be citizens. We are not citizens by default. So literally, you are nationless. You are homeless. You don't have a nationality. You are not considered a living man or woman. You are just property. And they will continue to seek you and destroy you. All right? If you don't correct your identity. I love you guys. My email is in the link below. We got work to do. This is a need. It's not a want. It's a need. You need to correct your identity. Save your children. So, well, first save yourself. Save your children. Save your family and your relatives. And spread the word. We got work to do. All right? Peace.